Today I woke up and I thought, do I really know how an FMCW radar works? So I thought I'd mix some sine waves together and, and see what happened. And I found out that simulating the basic functionality of a, an FMCW radar when you point it at a stationary target is, is really easy and, and it can fit into 30 lines of code. Uh, so I have made a video summarizing that basic demonstration. The principle of an FMCW radar is that it emits a chirp and a chirp is a sine wave whose frequency increases linearly with time. So a chirp would be the red line on this plot. And that chirp uh, travels through space, bounces off a target and returns and, and is detected. And actually the, the beginning of your transmit chirp goes away, bounces back and returns uh, well before uh, for, for a ground-based radar well before um, the transmit chirp is finished. So there's a lot of overlap between the two lines. And that's really, really important. Um, and it actually determines the maximum range of the radar is, is when you when you get less and less overlap, you the radar works less and less well. So how does the code work? I've modeled it on the KA band radar instrument that's part of the KUKA radar that was deployed on the Mosaic expedition in 2019. Uh, the chirp length is two milliseconds. Uh, the, the lower part of the bandwidth, the bottom frequency of the chirp is 30 gigahertz. The top of the bandwidth, the top frequency of the chirp is 40 gigahertz. That's the speed of light. Uh, and for this model, we'll, we'll say that the target is two meters away and we'll see if we can uh, combine some signals and, and, extract, and extract that from the signal. So uh, I've also defined this high number for the number of uh, like measurements that the the KUKA makes in a in a given chirp, so it's it's going to be listening and it's going to be digitizing a signal, uh, and that's um, going to going to define our time axis and the, the like the time resolution. But you, you can make that any number, and the if you make it lower, the resolution of your radar will just go down a bit. The first thing we're going to work out is the two way travel time for the given target range. So we need to work out the time that it's going to take for that chirp to to go reflect and come back and that closely well that is in fact the td on this diagram uh, and we're going to make a transmit chirp using the scipy signal chirp function um, if you just try to naively plot a gigahertz frequency chirp you'll get a plot like this and it's really boring because the frequency is so high that you can't see the lines so i recommend just plotting the first uh, 100,000 perhaps. And that illustrates how a chirp is constructed, that it starts off at a low frequency and gradually ramps up to a high frequency. Next, we're gonna model the number of samples until the return. So um, the, the, the pulse is emitted or the energy is emitted. Uh, how, many, uh, how many samples is the radar gonna take? How many measurements is gonna take uh, before the chirp comes back? And we're going to make our, our transmit chirp have a little bit of space on the end and our receive chirp have a little bit of space at the front. So that corresponds to uh, including the area outside this orange box. So, so we need, we need the, um, the red line to have a little bit of time on the end and the green line to have a little bit of time at the beginning. So we've got these two signals now that we're going to mix together and um, we're going to start mixing them just by adding them. So um, if you add them together, uh, again, you can't look at them in their in their raw frequency. Um, if you were to do that, you would again get the the blue block. Oh, uh, not quite the blue block, but close to the blue block. If you if you want to look at the result, really, you need to look at the first million or so uh, data points. And you can see that adding these two chirps together, you get a beats frequency. And that, that's, that results from them being slightly offset in time. And you can count these ovals that you see on the screen and you can work out the frequency of this beats function. And I did that earlier while I was writing the code. Um, if you want to be a bit smarter, and certainly if you're, certainly if you're designing a radar, you, you really want to determine the frequency without counting it by eye. You want to do a fast Fourier transform or, or any kind of Fourier transform, in fact. And it turns out rather annoyingly that you can't actually do a Fourier transform on a linearly mixed uh, function. 
So you can't do a Fourier transform on this, uh, this receive chirp plus transmit chirp. You have to do it on a non-linearly mixed uh, function. So you have to mix the chirps in a different way. Here I've done it just by multiplying them. Uh, so I've multiplied the receive chirp with the transmit chirp. And you can see that when you do that, you get something that looks a lot more like a wave. And a Fourier transform loves that. It knows exactly what to do. And if we run a Fourier transform on this function, the mixture, the nonlinear mixture between the receive and the transmit chirp, we get this. And there's clearly one part of the frequency spectrum that's much more powerful than the rest, three orders of magnitude more powerful than the rest, and that is the frequency of this beats function. So uh, there's a little bit of code that extracts the value of this. I've used the pandas data frame, but you could probably do it with the, the built-in NumPy functions and, and leave out that module. Uh, and we find that the frequency of max power on this frequency power plot uh, is 66 kilohertz. And um, that, that frequency corresponds to the beats that you get from combining your two chirps non-linearly non uh, and then we use something called the FMCW equation to convert our frequency of max power into the radar range. So the FMCW equation, it's in, it's in all the books, is the speed of light times the frequency of max power times the chirp length over two times the, uh, the bandwidth. And you can also, uh, there's another form of the FMCW equation where you, uh, rather than using the bandwidth and this uh, chirp length, you can combine them into the slope of these two, uh, these two lines. But here I've used the arguably the more standard of the two uh, to convert the frequency of max power in the beats function into the radar range. So there you have it, a 30 line bit of code that demonstrates the basic ranging functionality of an FMCW radar. Uh, the link to the code is going to be in the description of the video and I encourage you if you're watching this to have a go.